What's up, boxing fans? This is TBE Boxing back at you again. Today's topic Lubin versus Gaucha, the post fight analysis, Charlo versus Rosario, and Spence versus Garcia, pre fight analysis. Let's chop it up and see what it's all about. <laughs> All right, boxing fans. So, uh, a couple of fights on last night. Uh, I didn't get to see the Innis fight, but, uh, you know, I heard that Innis knocked out a Bree. So, uh, we all know something like that was going to happen. Uh, Innis is uh, a pretty good fighter 147 but uh, I didn't see that fight so I'm, I can't talk about that fight maybe I'll talk about it a little bit later if I get to watch it but right now uh, I want to start off with the Lubin versus Gaucher Gaucher or Gaucher or Gaucher however you pronounce it uh, that fight uh, was a pretty was a slow fight basically uh, you know, uh, it wasn't a very exciting fight. Uh, they basically, you know, both of these guys basically were just positioning themselves. And, you know, I guess it was a, a type of a, a more of a technical fight because uh, it, it wasn't very, it wasn't a very aggressive fight. Let's put it to you like that, okay? So basically, uh, Lubin was the one doing the, you know, being the aggressor, if you can call it that. Uh, at what he was doing, yeah, but he was the one being more aggressive. Uh, Gauche really didn't do much at all. I mean, uh, he basically stayed on the defense, the, you know, I mean, and there wasn't much offense coming from Lubin, and there wasn't much of anything coming from uh, Gauche. So the fight wasn't, uh, it wasn't a very exciting fight. You didn't, you, you really didn't get to see much of, of both fighters. You couldn't really see anything from them you know so if we were looking to see where Lubin you know uh has progressed uh since he got knocked out by Charlo uh you didn't get a chance to see that in this fight because he, he wasn't able to show much because there wasn't much offense coming from uh from Gauche and there wasn't much offense coming from Lubin either so they both the guys just basically kind of circled each other the whole night I mean you know there's a part there in the 10th round where Lubin got off uh, Lubin got tagged, and uh, same thing for uh, Gauche, uh, and I think it was in the 12th round. But other than that, there wasn't much excitement in this fight, and it was much of a fight, really, if you want to, you know, be real about it. Uh, now, I mean, look at the fight, though. I mean, we, we can, you know, we can gain something from the fight by analyzing, you know, what they were actually in there doing. And from what I can see, uh, Lubin didn't really show me much more than what he had, you know, from before. I mean, he doesn't seem much different uh, as far as I can see. And, you know, if you were to ask me, I think if if uh, Lubin were to go back in there again with Charlo, he'd get, he, would, he would lose again. I don't think, you know, I, I don't know if he'll get knocked out again. I, I, I would probably think that would be likely because uh, the way Lubin fights, he doesn't really... Uh, doesn't really move his head very much, you know. His head is just straight up right there for you to hit. So I mean, that's not a good look. So uh, you know, not enough head movement as far as I can see. And he's, you know, uh, his defense is not the best. I mean, uh, not that Gauche mounted much of an offense, and you couldn't really tell if you know Lubin's defense improved or, or you know anything like that because there wasn't much coming his way for him to defend against. But uh, from what I can see, you know, he keeps his hands low and, uh, you know, not much head movement. So I'm thinking Charlo, a guy like Charlo, you know, Charlo would pick him apart again. I, I just don't think that he's ready yet for Charlo or I, I'm not even sure if he'll ever be ready for Charlo. Okay, uh, that's the what I, you know, that's basically what I saw from this fight, you know. Uh, if if this was a fight, and I'm and for what I'm understanding, you know Lubin is now in line to 
for the you know for the, the Charlo title and you know I don't think Charlo have much to worry about okay he can just relax because it's gonna be probably a repeat of the same thing that happened last time you know if not exactly the same thing something similar so I don't think Lubin is much of a threat to Charlo at this point I mean you know not from what I saw in this fight anyway so I, I like I said you really couldn't tell much you know uh, in this fight because Gaucher didn't really do much so uh, is Lubin ready for uh, Charlo I don't think so I think he needs to you know uh, get some more rounds in first uh, you know maybe another two fights or so maybe with a tougher opponent than uh, than Gaucher and I, I thought Gaucher was a pretty tough fighter but I don't know what happened in this fight you know he didn't mount much of an offense it was kind of strange but yeah it is what it is, but yeah, I don't think uh, Lubin is ready yet. He needs to, you know. I, I don't. I, I doubt if he's ever going to be ready because I'm, I just don't see the technique that he uses as being, you know, being a difficult technique for uh, Charlo to decipher. You know, I, I think Charlo, you know, he's more or less made for Charlo. I don't think. I don't think at at this point in his career that he's, you know, he should be fighting Charlo. I don't think he's ready for Charlo, and basically, you know, that's what I see. From that fight you know so I mean I mean I could be wrong okay uh, you know there's a possibility that uh, Lubin might be ready okay uh, I mean you never know but like I said from what I saw Lubin is not ready for prime time and if he goes in there against Charlo more than likely, uh, we're going to see the same result. And that's, you know, what I, you know, that's all I have to say about that fight, okay? I don't think, you know, there's going to be much to it if they fight again. You know, they need to, uh, I mean, he's earned his way back. I mean, I can't say anything about that. I mean, it's been uh, two years and he's been fighting and, you know, trying to come back up to this level. And he has done that. You know, that's Lubin. You know, he has done it. I mean, I have to give him credit for that. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, you know, he should have fight some more tougher. I mean, he did fight some tough guys. He fought Gallimore, I believe. So he fought a lot of guys. So, you know, maybe I'm just seeing something that's not there and he's actually ready and, and, and maybe he'll fight to the level of the competition, you know. So let's hope that's the case. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens when, if they actually meet in the ring in the, in the near future. Okay. All right. So the next... Uh, fight I want to talk about that this is a pre-fight analysis you know the fight that's coming up uh, is uh, Charlo versus Rosario okay uh, Jamel Charlo versus Rosario now, that's, a, that's a fight that's coming up uh, in a, a week or two I think and uh, that should be an interesting fight okay now from what we know about that fight uh what we don't about what from what we know about charlo uh, we, we i mean we already know what charlo can do you know charlo is a very good boxer uh skilled you know got punching power on both hands he's not that you know like uh i mean he does uh, he has you know he knocked out lubin with one punch so he does have one punch knockout you know in, in certain at certain certain times uh so i mean charlo uh I mean, I like Charlo. I like his skills, okay? I mean, he's probably the, the best boxer at 154 pounds that I can think of right now, okay? Uh, I mean, he ha he didn't he hasn't fought Laura yet, I don't believe, but that, you know, that would be an interesting fight as well. But they're friends, so I don't know if they're going to fight, but uh, Charlo is a good boxer, okay? And he, he, he can, I mean, he can, he can do it, he can do it all, basically. He can, you know, he can move, uh... He can fight backing up. He has a good jab, okay, hook. I mean, basically, Charlo has all the tools of a elite boxer, okay. That's basically, I can, as you know, as far as I can see, he and plus his, you know, his his proportion, his body proportion is perfect for the 154 pound division, okay. So he's basically. You know, if if you were to look at him and look at his skills, 
and you know uh, you would have to say that Charlo is probably the, at 154 is the ultimate fighting machine okay uh, and anybody that fights Charlo I mean in in the in the fight with Harrison you know uh, the first fight he outboxed Harrison I mean excuse me Harrison outboxed him in that first I mean it was a subtle difference in in how they you know in the win I mean the win was something you had to look at and look at really look closely at how they were boxing because that that boxing match between Charlo and uh, Harrison the first one was at a high level you know boxing wise and uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me Harrison you know outpointed him uh, you know uh, he outpointed Charlo and I mean if if you want if you looked at that fight and you, you watch it you know it was difficult to say who won the fight but if you look at it closely you'll see that Harrison actually won the fight now you know Charlo needed to make some adjustments in that fight that he just he just couldn't make for whatever reason okay and uh, you know uh, but he did make those adjustments in the second fight and he was able to stop uh, Harrison but you know when you were up at the top elite you know in a fight like that uh, you know somebody like Mayweather he would have made the adjustment in the fight not in the next fight they wouldn't be in the next fight <laughs> okay because he would have won the first time okay and so you know uh, Charlo made the adjustments but he made them in the next fight after he lost but uh, he did make them but so you know uh, suffice to say that Charlo is one of the top fighters if not the top fighter at 154 pounds okay that's clear and you know I don't think there's much to dispute about that uh, okay I mean uh, he's a beast at 154 pounds and he I think he got more confidence after he beat Harrison and more belief in himself and his skills after that fight okay I think he's matured skill wise you know after that fight I think he, he really boosted his confidence and put him in a place where he, I don't think it's gonna be hard, easy to beat him okay so Rosario, Jason Rosario, you know, who just beat Julian, uh, uh, who just beat uh, Julian, uh, uh, took the title from Julian. I mean, he, uh, I, I've seen him in a couple of fights now, okay. He's a strong guy, okay, power puncher, okay, and, you know, aggressive, come forward type of guy, okay, with some skills. He has boxing skills, so he's not just a, a, a pure he's not a slugger or anything he's a box a boxer puncher and he does have some skills uh, he has power as well okay and I he, he has a good reach I think his reach is probably he has probably has more reach than Charlo so uh, it should be an interesting fight okay now although uh, Rosario was able to overcome Julian and beat him. I don't think it's gonna be that easy with Charlo. Okay, I don't think that's gonna work with Charlo. I, I think Charlo can outbox him. Okay, I think that uh, I think Charlo is probably quicker than him. Okay, and Charlo could move going backwards. So if if Rosario presses him. I can see Charlo, you know, outboxing him and then eventually probably knocking him out if he presses Charlo too much, okay? From what I can see, Rosario's chance, the only chance that Rosario have in this fight is to try to, you know, box Charlo, use his reach, okay, and try to get in some power shots when he can, okay? But... I, I don't know. I don't think that's going to work against Charlo. I think Charlo, you know, uh, is going to really probably give uh, Rosario a boxing lesson because I think he's, you know, he's, he's more, uh, he's, I think he's a better defensive fighter and a better, uh, you know, offensive fighter in terms of the, the, the variety of uh, punches that he can bring to the table and, and what he can do in the ring, both yeah, whether he's moving forward, backwards, or, or, or whatever. I think that, you know, he's just an all-around better fighter than uh, Rosario. And uh, I think, again, I think at this point in his career, he has a lot to lose if he loses this fight, and I don't think he wants to lose this fight. I think that 
Uh, not that he wants to lose any fight, but I just think that he's going to be motivated. He's highly motivated to win this fight. So is Rosario, by the way, because I mean, this is his first defense. So they're both motivated, but I just think that Charlo, you know, uh, has improved a lot over the last two years, and I think that he's going to beat Rosario. He probably is going to stop Rosario, I think. Because, I, you know, I don't know. He could go the distance, but... I don't think Charlo is going to want it to go the distance. Uh, I think he's going to try to stop Rosario, and I think he probably can. Okay? Because I think even though, you know, although Rosario has some good skills, I just don't think his, his boxing ability is is to the level of Charlo at this point in his career. I don't think he's, you know, he's not there yet. Okay? And so I don't see him beating Charlo. I, I see Charlo stopping him possibly you know, uh, anywhere between the ninth and the twelfth round, you know, it, it might not even go that far, uh, you know, but that, that, then again, it could go the distance, you never know, because uh, Rosario is a tough character, he's not an easy guy to take out, so uh, I don't think that, you know, it's going to be an easy fight, but it's not going to be a extremely difficult fight either for Charlo, I don't think, I think he has the skills, uh, you know, the experience and the motivation to win this fight and win it big. Okay, so in this fight, I'm thinking that uh, Charlo is going to take it. Uh, uh, whether by decision or by stoppage, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that Charlo should take this fight based on, you know, the arguments I just made. You know, is, 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 is the maturity of his boxing ability at this point in his career. Okay, his motivation. Okay. Uh... And, you know, uh, like I said, I think that Rosario, although he has boxing skills and he, you know, he does have power, uh, I don't see him, his skills being equal to Charlo at this point, not yet. And so I think that Charlo's going to take this fight uh, by stoppage or by, uh, by uh, decision. But uh, either way, uh, I'm thinking that he's going to win. He's gonna win the fight, so I'm gonna give that one to Charlo. Okay, the next fight we want to talk about is the uh, upcoming fight between uh, Errol Lechute Spence and Danny Swift Garcia. All right, so this is another interesting fight. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, as we know, we haven't seen Spence in a couple of years. It was, you know, almost well, almost two years now since he, you know, uh, over a year since he had that accident, and so a lot of people don't really know what to expect in this fight with Danny Garcia. But we're not. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to, uh, uh, you know, go ahead and as uh, you know, act as if Spence never really really had an accident, and he's just going to fight Garcia next, and we're going to analyze him based on. The fight he had with the last his last fight which was with porter so uh what we are seeing with spence uh, you know spence garcia fight that should be a very interesting fight now we have a lot to work with with, with these two guys because we have seen them fight the same opponents you know previously okay and so uh you know spence has fought porter and so have garcia okay uh, and garcia also fought thurman Okay, so uh, we have, a, and then they, they both fought, fought uh, they both fought the other guy from Baltimore, I can't remember his name right now, Richardson or something like that, uh, I, I don't remember his name, but anyway, uh, they both fought him, so we can, we have a lot to work with here. Now, I, you know, in the last fight that Spence had, uh, you know, we could even go to the, the fight before that with uh, Mikey Garcia. Uh, a lot of people expected him to knock out Mikey Garcia, and he didn't. And a lot of people expected him to knock out Porter, and he didn't. I mean, he he had said he was going to knock, he was going to stop Porter. Spence said he would stop Porter, but he wasn't able to do that. And that fight with Porter was a very tough fight for Spence. He took a lot of punishment in that fight. I mean, uh, you know, he basically fought. Porter's fight, the whole fight, and in doing that, he took a lot of punishment in that fight, okay, unnecessary punishment as far as I'm concerned, 
And I thought, you know, I'm thinking that they used the wrong strategy. Now, I don't know, you know, if he consciously decided to fight that fight just to prove something or he was forced to fight that fight because of what Porter was doing. It's hard for me to decide that. I don't know, but I'm thinking that he was forced to fight that fight because of what Porter was doing. So he, he wasn't, a, you know, he, he didn't volunteer to stay in there with Porter and slug it out uh, for, 50, for 12 rounds. I think that just because of the way, you know, I think uh, Porter was the one to set the tempo and the pace in that fight. Okay, and so he, he basically dragged uh, Errol Spence into it and, and into a slug match or, you know, a inside fight. And, you know, uh, Spence was able to perform and, 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 you know, perform admirably under the circumstances. But again, I'm just thinking that uh, that was too much punishment. That wasn't the fight he was supposed to fight under any circumstance. And the fact that he fought that type of fight is a red flag as far as I'm concerned. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I wasn't very happy that he fought that way. Now, if, if, if we look at Danny Garcia, I mean, I, you know, he's, you know, Danny Garcia is a very good fighter. He's been around for a while now. You know, he came up on 140, uh, and, uh, he's been campaigning at World to Wait, uh, and he's been doing pretty good. I mean, nobody ever really beat up Danny Garcia in, in that I've seen, you know, he has lost fights, but he has not been, you know, dismantled or broken down or any of that. You know, he, any fight that he lost has always been a close fight. Okay. So, uh, you know, you got to put him up there with, the, with, with, you know, the best of them. He's one of the best fighters at welterweight, elite fighter at welterweight. I mean, I, I don't know. In terms of him a matchup against Spence, I don't know. I mean, you know, Danny has a good left hook. Uh... I don't think he used the jab enough, okay? And to me, uh, any fighter that doesn't use the jab is a one-handed fighter, okay? He's a handicapped fighter as far as I'm concerned. Any fighter, I don't care who he is. If he's not using the jab, you're a handicapped fighter. And a lot of these fighters, you know, don't use the jab. So a lot of these fighters are handicapped, okay? And Danny Garcia is one of those fighters. He doesn't really use the jab that much. He should use it more. I mean, I saw, you know, if we look at the fight, but one thing about Garcia, he does, it, it seems that he has a lot of power and he has demonstrated that, you know, uh, he's a heavy-handed fighter. He hits hard, okay? And he's not the fastest fighter in the world. I mean, to me, he's a little, I, I think Spence might be a little faster than him. You know, both of them are not that, doesn't have a lot of, you know, not you know, great hand speed or anything like that. But uh, I think Spence might be a little bit quicker, okay? Uh, but, you know... I'm pretty sure that Danny Garcia has the bigger punch. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you look at the fight between Danny Garcia and Porter, you'll notice in that fight that Porter stayed away from, he boxed Danny for the first half of the fight. Like he just, he went in a boxing, he did a boxing match, a boxing, he put on a, box, a boxing show. He didn't really try to engage Danny too much for the first six rounds of that fight. He basically boxed, moved around the ring, jabbed, stayed away from Danny, okay? And then at, after the sixth round, at the, at the beginning of the, at the, or somewhere in the sixth round, he started taking the fight to Danny Garcia, okay? He, he started pushing the fight, okay? He started being more aggressive because I, I'm thinking the reason for that is because he was weary, you know, uh, uh, he was weary of, of uh, Danny Garcia's power in the first in the early part of the fight and that's why he was boxing because you know he, he didn't want to get he didn't want to taste this power i think that's what that that was all about okay and even after the sixth round he still boxed but he engaged more he he was more aggressive he took the fight to danny more he, he took more chances but he didn't do that until after the sixth round okay so that tells me that porter respects danny's power okay and that danny's power is not something you know, it's not a joke. It's a, it's the real deal, okay? Because if you see the way Porter fought Spence, he had no fear of Spence's power. He was in there with Spence the whole time, in in you know, in the pocket with Spence the whole fight. He didn't try to back off or any of that. He just kept moving forward the whole time. So, the fact that he didn't do that against Danny tells me that he has a lot more respect for Garcia's power than he does for Spence's power, okay? And that was very apparent. And another reason why I'm thinking that is because if you look at the fight between 
Danny Garcia and uh, Keith Thurman, we see the same thing, but in reverse. Okay? We saw that uh, Thurman went in there, and for the first six rounds, he attacked, he, he kept, you know, he went in there and attacked Garcia, Danny Garcia. He went, he went on the offense from the first six rounds. Okay? And then the last six rounds, he kind of took it, he started boxing, started taking it easy. So what do we learn from that? Well, I'm thinking that when he went in there, uh, Garcia, I mean, Thurman wanted to establish, and he wanted to establish himself, and he wanted Dan to respect his power from the very beginning, okay? Because, in, and the reason, the reason you would do something like that is because the guy that you're going to fight has power, and you know he has power, but you want him to know that you have power, and you want him to respect your power. Because if you respect your power, then he's not going to, you know, try to just rush you and try to take you out with his power because he's going to have respect for your power. So that's what God, that's what uh, Thurman did. He went in there and he went all out, it seemed like, you know, trying to uh, establish himself in the first couple of rounds, trying to let Danny know that, hey, I'm here and I'm here, you know, I have power too. It's not just you. But after the sixth round, I think that, you know, you know, uh, I mean, I think he did do that to a certain degree in terms of, you know, letting, having uh, Danny respect him. But, uh, you know, uh, after, you know, after around the first six rounds or so, I think that, you know, uh, Thurman realized that, yeah, I mean, Danny might respect his power, but Danny's power was a little bit out there. It's too much for him, really. So he started you know, doing a boxing, he started boxing Danny, you know, I think he realized that he might have power, but Danny's power might be a little bit uh, more power than he have, and so he better, he needs to show more respect than, than Danny's showing him respect, and so he started boxing and started, you know, moving around and jabbing and, and trying to stay away from Danny's power the whole fight, so I, you know, both of those, so both of those fights, if you analyze both of those fights with Danny Garcia, you'll see that the, both Thurman and Porter have, uh, you know, high respect for Danny's power. So that means, that tells me that there's something there. there. He does have power, okay? And that it's a power to be respected, okay? I mean, and, I, and, and from the mere fact that, you know, Keith Thurman, which was, a, at the time when Keith Thurman was fought Danny, he was one of the elite fighters, uh, fighters of the uh, welterweights. But now he's, you know, more or less, he's, he's out of there. He's pretty washed up now. I heard last time I heard he's like 200 pounds or something like that. So I, I'm, I'm not even sure if he's, he's going to come back again and fight anymore. But suffice to say that at the time he fought Garcia, he was, you know, one of the elite fighters. And, you know, even though he has a lot of pop himself, he respected Danny's pop. And so did Porter, who was another elite fighter, you know, all the time, uh, one of the all time greats at welterweight. And he respects Danny's power. So if Errol Spence doesn't come in this ring. I mean, if Errol Spence come in the ring and think that Dan, there's no power there, he can just fight Danny Garcia the way he fought Thurman, you know, getting getting all these, taking all these punches, I don't think that's going to work for him. Because I think if Danny connects solidly with a couple of punches, it's over for Spence. Okay? I think he has to come in there. I think he's going to have to fight the same fight. He's going to fight. He's going to have to fight Danny Garcia the same way he fought Mikey Garcia. That is, he has to box him. Okay, uh, maybe for the first couple of rounds uh, until Danny, you know, some of his power, you know, dissipates and then he can probably take the fight to Garcia after that because I think he's, you know, I think he got a better uh, boxing ability, I, I would think, in terms of movement and so forth than Danny Garcia. Even though Danny Garcia is not, too, not a slouch himself, but he's not exactly a mover. He can move when he has to, but he's not exactly, that's not his style. So... I'm thinking that Spence will have to be careful about Danny's power, and I don't think he can, you know, I don't. If he lets Danny connect as much as uh, Porter connected, then it's going to be a problem. But I don't think that's going to happen because uh, this Porter, I mean, Garcia doesn't fight as aggressively as uh, Porter does, and he doesn't throw as many punches as Porter does. So, you know, and the pace that Danny Garcia fights at is a lot slower than Porter. So I'm thinking that. Spence shouldn't have much of a problem boxing Danny Garcia uh, and staying away from his power, okay? Uh, he should be able to keep him at the end of his jab and, uh, and you know, just basically I'll point him for the, for the 12 rounds, okay? I'm, I'm not, I, I don't see him trying to 
I mean, stopping Garcia, Danny Garcia, I don't see it. Uh, I mean, not, it's possible, but for him to go and try to stop Garcia, he, he got to put himself in in, 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 in harm's way. And, I, you know, I'm not sure, unless he catches him on a, with a punch, you know, while they're boxing and then, you know, he can just go in and, and, and take him out. But uh, Garcia might be hard to, to uh, I think he got a pretty good chin. And I don't think uh, Spence will be able to stop him. I think he probably, I'll just, you know, I'll point him. But again, I, 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 I'm going to tell you that Danny is a live dog in this fight, okay? It's not a foregone conclusion that Spence is going to beat Danny Garcia. He's going to knock him out or whatever people are thinking. I don't, you know, I, I'm thinking that it's not going to be an easy fight for him. I mean, it's not gonna, it shouldn't be a difficult, difficult fight. He should be able to outbox him, keep an end of the jab, and, and, and he should win that way, okay? But again, uh, you know, if Danny Garcia connects with a solid punch, you know, one of his power punches, uh, Spence might have a long night ahead of him, okay? And so it should be an interesting fight, okay? Danny has a shot. I don't think, you know, it's a case where we can say that Danny has no chance of beating Spence whatsoever. The fight that we saw last time with uh, Porter uh, showed you that... Uh, you know, Spence is beatable. He can be touched. And once you can be touched, uh, you can be beat. Okay. I mean, because if you look at the Danny Garcia and the Porter fight, and you look at the Spence and the Porter fight, Danny Garcia had an easier fight against Porter than Spence did. Okay. It was not difficult. You, you know, uh, Porter didn't touch Danny Garcia as much as he touched Spence. He didn't go inside. He didn't fight Garcia on the inside as much as he fought. Spence on the inside, so he basically took the fight to, to Spence, that is Porter, but he, but he didn't take the fight to Garcia, okay, a except after the sixth round, and he didn't do it as much as he did against Spence. You know, he he basically kind of mixed it up, box, you know, you know, be aggressive, box, you know, uh, so it was a whole different fight. He fought, he fought Garcia the way he fought Ugas, okay, uh, so. You know, or something similar to that. So I'm thinking that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a good reason for that. And I think that if Spence going there and don't, you know, uh, stay on his P's and Q's, you know, he might get touched by Garcia and that it could be goodbye, Lou, you know, goodbye, Lucille or whatever. So I'm thinking that Spence has to be very careful of Danny Garcia. Uh, he has to be on his P's and Q's. He has to box him, stay away from, you know, his power punching. And he should be able to take the fight by decision. But if he doesn't do that, okay, if he goes in there and get careless, uh, he couldn't get stopped by Danny Garcia. I mean, Danny Garcia does have stopping power. And like I said, you know, Spence was, you know, he got touched up by Port in the last fight. And I, I'm, you know, I'm going to say something else. I'm thinking that. That fight took a, that fight with Porter took a lot out of Spence. Okay, I'm thinking he, you know, it really took a lot out of him. I don't think it's the same Spence that we saw. We, we're gonna see, you know, uh, now. I think that it's possible to me that the fight took a lot out of him because that was he took a beating in that fight. Okay, with Porter, he took a very severe beating in that fight. And uh, you know, you could if you look at him after the fight, you could see that. And then after that, he had the accident. So now, you know, I'm going to bring up the accident now. So now he had the accident and nobody knows, you know, what is it, how he, you know, he, he what he looks like, what he's going to do, how he's going to perform after the accident. So there's two scenes, there's two incidents that we need to look at for this fight. And that one is that Spence got beat up very bad by Porter in the last fight. And he also got into an accident on top of that. So that's two events, you know, two very uh, traumatic events that, you know, he's coming away from right now. So, you know, it should be interesting to see how, you know, how he comes back from both of those things. And uh, this should be an interesting fight. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and everybody else should be, uh, you know, it should be a great fight. But that's all I have for right now. Uh, this is TB Boxing. I'm out.